Hi everyone, Gustav here. Today I'd like to quickly show you one specific use case related with the field parameters. So previously during the video, we were discussing a different use case when we have the single selection for the scenario. So we were able to pick whether the previous year or the target should be displayed. And if you pick, for example, the target, you can see that above the columns and the chart display the information for the targets. If you go to the previous year, now the previous year is visible here. However, for our today use case, we are creating a little bit different use case because you can imagine that you might be requested to have two scenarios at the same time, but one should be displayed on the left side of your actuals and one should be displayed on the right side of your actuals. Of course, in a situation, if you have both scenarios, like both the previous year and the target on the left side to your actuals, you can use a bit, little bit more straightforward approach and you can just simply use a single uh, field parameter. However, in this particular use case, when you have the previous year, then actuals, and then the secondary scenario, in that case, the target, but it can be the budget, the forecast, or any other your specific uh, comparative metric, there is a little bit different use case for that one. So just to let you know how it can look like. If you, for example, only select the previous year, now you see only the previous year here and here in the table. If you select both, you can, of course, see both. And if you unselect the previous year, you can see now only the target here and here and also in a KPI card. One thing that I wanted to mention is that in some cases, if we unselect both scenarios, we can assume that we won't be able to see like any of the scenarios. So maybe we can even expect that behavior that we have unselected both elements here in the slicer selection we might expect to don't see either the previous year and the target here on the column chart and also in a table nevertheless i would generally say that for the simplification standpoint and for our today discussion discussion i would say that we don't want to make like too much of workarounds because to some extent it is possible to actually have this unselection here on a slicer and disable the columns still let's assume that we all use the field parameters and not switch based like formulas let's assume we are still using the field parameters so to some extent it might be work around it however it's not a stable solution so that's not what i wanted to recommend you to do so let's assume if we are unselect both scenarios we still want to see both as selected that's how usually slicer is working so if we have no selection it works exactly as no selection and the other thing is that the suppression columns like the disappearing columns in the table is even like a less straightforward thing comparing to the columns in the charts like long story short so once again let's assume that if we have unselected both options we still treat it as all select and that's that's gonna be fine for our use case nevertheless what is the most important is to how create this uh, layout when we have the scenario on the left side and on the right side so let's go quickly to the uh, power bi and i would like to specifically focus on that one because we also have the case of the kpi cards but this one is switch based it's based on a formulas that contains the switch function and there is a little bit more like nuanced approach to have this multi-select and to disable one of this option uh, dynamically so uh, to keep that more like straightforward and simplified for today meeting, let's focus on a field parameter implementation and I will cover this particular card with multi-selection in the future videos. So for now, if we have this um, uh, layout for the, for the field parameter, let's focus on what's the most important. We have the actuals dragged from our model here. This is our actuals in the middle. On the left side and on the right side, we have two field parameters. The one difference is if we would like to place both scenarios on the left side, as you can see here, so we have the previous year target and actuals, it's going to be even more straightforward because we simply put a single single field parameter on the left side to the actuals. However, for this use case, when we have one uh, scenario to be displayed on the left side and one scenario to be displayed on the right side to actuals, we need addition additional steps and one additional field parameter. So let's quickly check how it can look like. Uh, we have these two field parameters created. One is the scenario PY, PY value and the second is scenario target value. So the structure of these field parameters is very simple. It's just one row, origin name or the name you can just rename if you would like to after the field parameter creation. You have the reference measure. In that case, is the revenue previous, previous year. And then we have two additional parts added on our side. So one is the previous year. This is the most important for today meeting. This is like optional and it's uh, created in order to achieve additional functionality with this metric selection when you can disable relative variances, absolute variances or just the values. But it's a bit different use case so let's focus on the 
on the things which are the most important for today meeting. And this is the part which is added here, which is PY. And analogically for the target is uh, the name here. And this now we have like the two field parameters. However, let's it is important the slicer selection is driven not by the field parameter but rather by the control table so we have this table scenario selection and it looks like that so we have to rows id 1 2 name previous year target abbreviated forms more lengthy forms etc so the most important is id and the name uh, for today presentation and if you go to the model, you can see that there is like the specific links between these control tables like we have here on the top and the uh, field parameters here. What is not important for our today meeting is this table, like for a metric selection and these two field parameters because they were created for a, a bit different use case that were presented in a previous video. I will drop a link in the comment section so you can also uh, dive into that one if you'd like to. Nevertheless, for our today meeting, the most important is the master table for the table scenario selection and these two field parameters here. So it's like the um, one to many relationships with the single direction, as you can see here, and is basically related by the name of these scenarios. So in our main control table, we have the previous year target and it's connected to the just the target, the one additional part of the field parameters we uh, just created. And just to let you know, when you have this field parameters as that one, for example, the previous year volume, when you are when you start adding more parts on the right side, you can see that the automatic name, the origin name that Power BI will uh, create is like the value four, value five, value six, etc. So you can simply go to that view, click on your value four, value five column, and you can just rename it to any name which is more meaningful for you. In that case, I name it like metric name, metric name key, which is not so important for today. But what is most important is the scenario name key, which is that part. It's like previous year PY. It's uh, named as that this column is named as the scenario name key, and it's connected with the name of our table selection, which is used for our slicer selection. So in that case, we are enabling the column chart and the table because table is structured in the same way. And the table works in a, just the same way because we have using the same field parameters, which we use also in the column chart. So as you can see here, we have the actuals which are placed here. We have our previous year value field parameter on the left side and the target value field parameter on the right side. So these are exactly these columns here. The PY, then we have the AC, which are just derived directly from our model. Like here, it's like the a specific measure for the extras, and then we have the target. These two columns are uh, fully dynamic. We also see the variances, both the absolute the, and the relative. However, it's not so important for today's use case. They are added as a separate field parameter that you can see here. So in table, we have in total three field parameters. However, just to achieve the solution having um, these scenarios on the left and on the right side comparing to the actuals, what was the most important for today meetings was this field parameter and this field parameter that I placed on the left side and on the right side to the actuals. And that's actually everything I wanted to share with you today regarding these field parameters. There are, of course, um, many more nuances regarding the subtitles, which actually allows you to uh, bring more of the names that are selected here. Nevertheless, we'll cover that. Uh, in the next videos along with this KPI cards, which allows you to have this multi-select display of the KPI cards. So hope it will be useful and um, take care to the next one. Bye.